Hi friends, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I would like to say first off, my face, my eyes especially, are a little puffy this morning. I cried like a baby during a certain show, Ozark, during a certain part that I just like could not handle. Um, the, I, I'm not sure I can take this show, but anyway, I do that and I immediately go to bed and I wake up and I'm like, oh, the face. But anyway, you guys, I want to talk about Wet n Wild in this video. I thought I knew a ton about Wet n Wild, okay? I love the Photo Focus foundations, um, the Incognito Concealer, Photo Focus powder, the blushes, the eyeshadows. Like, there are so many things that I consider to be gems from Wet n Wild. But then as I was looking through Ulta's website, I realized just how many things I had never tried. I mean, we've got all these different, like, stick products, stick foundation, and then, like, all this that I never really got into. And today, I guess I just want to put the spotlight on that stuff and test it out because I'm just realizing, yeah, there's some stuff that you're really not that familiar with from this line. So a lot of this stuff is face stuff, but I can prep maybe use some lesser used Wet n Wild in other areas as well to kind of keep with the theme. But for starters, I'm going to use a primer that's new to me, actually. This is called Glass Correct, and this is the brightening one. I think they had a couple different options. It says skin looks naturally corrected and reflective as a crystal, and it does contain vitamin C as well. So we're going to use a little bit of this. The texture seems really nice, as I was just kind of playing with it on the back of my hand yesterday. Hmm, I'm really seeing, like, the surface of my skin looks really dewy now, but I love the way it smooths on. Like, I understand the concept behind some of those gripping primers, but they can be, some of them, a pain, like the e.l.f. one, to really, like, get all blended in. This just went on so smoothly and looks actually really beautiful. It's like I don't think there's actual shimmer in it, but the texture of the product is making me look very, very hydrated now. And if you like sticks and cream products, you're in luck for this video because what about this stick foundation? I think I owned this at one time a long time ago, and I honestly don't think I ever reviewed it. It's It was no longer in my collection recently, um, so I thought I would buy one. I got soft beige. It looks like a pretty large stick foundation. How much is in here? 0.42 ounces. Okay. It feels kind of thick going across the skin, but not dry at all. I'm just going to do a few stripes like this, and then I got my beauty blender to help blend it out. Shade seems pretty decent for me. I have normal to dry skin, so like I can handle some foundations that have a little moisture, but I really don't want to become a grease slick with all these cream products today, but I feel like using the beauty blender can kind of help it work into the skin a bit better, take care of any excess at least, you know? Wow, it's interesting how coverage-wise that seems so much like the regular photo focus, you know? There's no real pulling or tugging across the skin that's necessary here, even though, like I said, it, there's a thickness, um, there's kind of a moisture level in this product that makes it feel kind of rich going across. I'm not having any difficulty getting it blended out, and I'm sure I could have blended it with a brush, but like I said, beauty blenders are nice because they can kind of pick up any excess. By the way, my lips are a little stained from yesterday still. I tell you, that Besame lipstick, where is it? Wild Orchid. It hung on for dear life. Like, I didn't even do the double blot. I just kind of put it on once, but very full on, and it stayed so well. Okay, so here we are with the soft beige foundation stick all blended in, but the finish on the surface of the skin, um, how tacky do I feel? I'd say I feel hydrated, but not sticky. We're talking a medium coverage all over. Ultimately, after getting it all blended out, I would say it seems like a little bit lighter coverage than your regular Photo Focus liquid foundation. And I'm not sure if it's the stick or the primer, but I feel like I'm getting a finish on the skin right now, at least, that's a lot more like um, the end result from Photo Focus Dewy, okay? I'm trying to think of what else this stick kind of reminds me of in terms of other stick foundations I have. It's, I feel like it's got a little more moisture than my Huda stick. Um, it might be a little bit similar to a Makeup Forever foundation stick that I have, but yeah, I feel like the skin looks pretty darn fresh. Now, there's this line of stick products, and it's kind of interesting because you might open, like, one certain product on Ulta and get a few of these different options all together, like the highlight and contour type ones. So I got this shade labeled Conceal, and it says Follow Your Bisque. And I feel like I used to have this, but never really got into it. Again, I'm not sure what my deal was with this line of products, but I just never really got it going. So I'm going to like dab this on my under eye area here. It really seems like the kind of shade that would contrast, you know, with a cream contour, basically. 
and I'll do that next. I'm not going to put it all on my face at once, but there we go. Also going to use the Beauty Blender. Again, playing with it yesterday, swatching it out, feeling the texture. I thought it would be workable. It seems decently drier than my Neutrogena Hydro Boost Concealer Stick, but at the same time, I think it's giving more coverage than that. Getting all blended in. It's not looking especially thick. Honestly, I wasn't expecting it to blend out to be so, I don't want to say completely undetectable, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't really see it there. Like, I really am looking up close, and I think I'm probably seeing less evidence of this on my skin compared to the Incognito Concealer. The thing was, it was kind of oddly presented on Ulta's website because it was like this shade mixed in with some other highlight contour options, so I would see this less as like a shade coming from a full range of concealers and more as just the light option of a cream contour situation. I think that's the way they're selling it. And then, guys, we have the contour stick. This, I feel like I've seen a little more buzz about. I've seen more people using this. I remember people saying the shade name, Where's Walnut? So we're gonna try this. Um, again, it's going on well. The texture of, gosh, I really, really drew a line there, didn't I? <laughs> The texture of the sticks so far has felt really nice going across the skin. And I'm going to blend that in with my Sephora 57, or I'm sorry, the 56 Pro Foundation Brush. Same as my mini with the red handle that I often use. I just kind of use that more for blushes and this more for any kind of cream contour step. Zero complaints with how that blended in. I mean, I'm tempted to say, as I often say, like, it's not quite as creamy as an M Cosmetics stick, but nothing I've tried is, and this was still really easy to blend. I feel like it's as easy to blend as Huda Tantor. We watched Twister over the weekend. My brush is a little tornado, and it's going over that line. It's just taking it out. I'm trying to blend upward a bit on that. But yeah, I feel like the tone is plenty. You know, I'm just kind of wondering what's going to happen to my skin with all these cream steps together. Friends, I also got a blush stick. They did have several options here. I got the shade Floral Majority, and this actually came um, kind of broken. Like, the little top part was actually broken off from the bottom. Same texture, y'all. Same kind of easy pull across the skin. And I'm getting out my other Sephora 56. Oh, it's just kind of like, do you guys remember when these stick products originally came out? Like, it was quite a while ago. I feel like Wet n Wild was kind of ahead of their time, you know, because all this cream stuff is really taking off, like cream blushes, cream highlighters, all that jazz. I feel like Wet n Wild was a little ahead of things. Okay, there's that blush. I think I could build it a little bit. Add a little more. It's a really pretty shade. So all in all, the texture, the feel of all these sticks, I give them an A. They feel great. They feel easy to put on. My skin honestly doesn't feel as tacky as I thought it would after all these different steps that I've done. It's interesting how much that blush really works into the skin. Like it seems pretty pigmented when you start out, but like you're not left super blushy at the end. Like is my skin eating it up? Keep adding more. It's maybe not the most little goes a long way product, but it would seem that way when you first apply it to the skin. Maybe I'm just blending too well. <laughs> there we go. I'm pleased with that. There's no shimmer in this, it appears. It's just a straight up cream. Finally, in this little line, we have a highlighter stick. I have it in the shade When the Nude Strikes. So witty over there at Wet n Wild. Ooh, maybe the smoothest texture yet, you know? That's gliding on real nice. Up there on top of the cheekbones. Put a little up there. I'm going to use kind of an interesting brush that I got a while back from Sephora. It's the 47. I feel like this would be really good to kind of like pat over this. Okay. I was planning to set my under eye also, but I kind of got carried away with all the sticks. That's a really pretty highlight. Like not over the top. I'm not seeing any um, flecks of anything. No flecks of glitter. Just a nice solid stick highlighter. They remind me kind of of those Believe Beauty sticks. I know they have some kind of chubby stick things like this, but the textures of these are really, really good. They feel very high quality. And you know, the thing about Wet n Wild that somebody had mentioned when I was doing my duping the drugstore video was the fact that they're one of the few brands that has really, over a super long span of time, they've really stayed true to their price point. I am going to pull in my Photo Focus Loose Powder, and I'm going to do a little setting 
on the under eye and the T-zone. But overall, this is the completion of those cream face steps. A small tapered brush. I'm just gonna really hit this zone here around the nose, because that'll be an issue in the heat. Anybody else who frequents playgrounds with kids have issues with your kids wanting to be territorial about like a certain swing, because that's Bubba's current two-year-old problem right now. If he's heading toward the swings, and someone is on his favorite swing, they're all the same. He like runs over yelling, and I'm trying to give him the concept of taking turns. He's fine with taking turns on the slide, and I think that's because he can see a kid going down it and he can tell immediately when it's his turn. But when kids get on swings, it's kind of like a, you know, how long do I have to wait here for you to be done? But he should totally not be like yelling and causing a fuss. I think that setting powder is helping. Again, somehow the skin's not feeling sticky all over. After all those steps, after that kind of dewy seeming primer, the texture of the skin is getting along pretty good with all this. And I had it well moisturized, you know, underneath Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. There is something else, you guys, that I hadn't used, I don't think. I remember having one of these, but I think it was different shades. This is one called Flash Me, and it's called Blush Lighter. And that's the same thing they call the um, Beauty Bakery Cotton Candy Champagne Palette. But I was really interested in this shade and how that would be as a blush, that blush color there. Kind of go over because that blush was sort of sheer. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm seeing the little bit of glow that it has, but it's really not like cheesy or too much. Oh, that's cool. I like that. And then you got your highlighter shade here. Is this gonna be too dark? No, it's kind of like a soft, super soft copper with a pink reflect. This is so much fun. I love this brand. Okay, picking up a little bit of the highlight. I know we're going on top of some existing highlight, but maybe we'll have just incredible staying power because of this. Okay, so as I get that on my cheeks, I'm actually seeing the pinkiness come out of that. It's got like a pinky shift. That's kind of cool. And you could sort of mix the blush and the highlight with them being right side by side like that, and you could create more of a custom look. That's a pretty cheek. Where has that been for me? I love that. But this is stuff I don't see in the store, really, in person all that much. Like, I don't see that in Walmart or those sticks. Another thing I grabbed that I'd never tried was the matte finish of the setting spray. Now that we're all glowy, I'm not sure why I'm even bothering, but I do like the one that's called Natural Finish, and I've used that a lot, and I love the sprayers on these little bottles, so I just thought, well, we'll try the matte. Very light scent, maybe just a little bit floral. That's interesting. But oddly, I feel like the skin looks even more dewy now that I've just tossed that on. So next up, we're pulling out the nice ash retractable brow pencil. The shade is ash brown, but I've used this a lot. This is not new to me. As we lovingly say, she smells like a crayon box, but I still like her. But it's definitely a thicker brow pencil. It's that triangular sort of teardrop shape and not little at all, but it has the spoolie on the other end and I can do brows quick with this. Please let me know if you're finding some of the things that I used on my face. Are you finding that stuff in store? Was that Ulta exclusive stuff? Just trying to understand. Cause that definitely has sort of stood in the way of me trying it. It's me not, um, running into it. And I order a lot, you know, through Walmart delivery or possibly seeing it in store. I just never have in there. That would be kind of an annoyance about different makeup brands is the fact that, you know, sometimes they have certain things that they're making exclusive to that retailer and it gets confusing. Like I think Milani has some certain stuff, for example, that I think they only have at Walmart. When those all-inclusive palettes came out, they were a Milani website item or a Walmart item. You weren't gonna find those at Ulta. Now maybe things have changed, but it kind of makes it hard to remember all that and keep it straight. So I've got that on. I will use my Mega Clear Brow Gel. They also have a brow gel called Brow Sessive, which was pretty good as far as a tinted brow gel. Like it was okay. It wasn't Maybelline Brow Fast Sculpt, but it was all right. What am I gonna do for the eyes? I'm gonna use Milani Eyeshadow Primer first off, but the eyeshadow in Wet n Wild's line is a situation where pretty much everything like I am familiar with. Now, except this new Care Bears stuff, do you want me to review the Care Bears? I did get a PR package. 
of that collection. There's not a lot that deeply interests me in it, I gotta say, but there we go with that primer. Oh, I forgot about this though. A couple weeks ago, I got this in a Walmart order, the Sundaze, S-U-N-D-A-Z-E, five pan palette, and I don't think I've ever actually used it. So there's one that I'm not so familiar with. Super duper warm central. I'm gonna go to this orangey shade. That's gonna be our crease. I just love these palettes though. I don't know, I'm not sure how this one got past me. I think I realized it and I grabbed it, but they have the walking on eggshells that has been remade like about four times. That's a, just a great basic. Who is chirping out there? Hello. But the mattes are smooth. I enjoy the shimmers. You might get like kind of a glittery or oddball shade occasionally. I'm thinking of that one that I used, the Camouflant one. It has that kind of glitter in it. And of course the 10 pan palettes are just excellent too. But here I am just building up that orange. It's feeling just like a real pure orange. And then I'm gonna take some of the terracotta that's right next to it. So a little deeper, a little more red. Mm. Is it a sunrise eye or a sunset eye? This is pretty. I do like those shades. Now, thing is, kind of like a complaint that I had about the little warm quad from Hard Candy that I reviewed a couple weeks ago. Nothing really deep and dark here. I just used my darkest shade, you know? So I guess if I want to stick to this, I'll need to take some more of that, but use like a flat brush and just get a little out here, which can still be okay. I mean, not every look has to involve dark brown, but just so you know, doesn't get darker than that. Really nice pigmentation there. Then I kind of want to see what the texture of this one's like. It seems more like glimmery than these other two shimmers and it feels a little drier to the touch. Can the brush still apply it? Um, I would rather try it with the finger at this point. Hmm, not bad. Wow, okay. It builds. She builds. That's when she does her magic, okay? <laughs> Guys, this shade is not a glitter. It's just like a different textured shimmer is all I can say. It's a little bit drier, but she really does um, build up with some intensity. Ooh, I went a little high with that. Feeling the need to come back in with a smidge of my matte, just so she doesn't take over. And then right here, Ooh, that's pretty. That's a really nice soft shimmer, um, like a kind of a barely there golden champagne. By barely there, I mean like there's not a lot of harsh gold in that. We left the harsh gold for the center of the lid. I think that's pretty. Really like sunny and bright, but wow. I feel like they have another warm one that's not quite that loud. Go Commando is a little richer. You see how all the shades just go darker. Also liner wise, I feel like pretty familiar with what's going on there because of the breakup proof line. I like their breakup proof um, liquid liners. They're like a liner pen with a brush tip. Those are a great option for like saving money that or NYX Epic Ink. I'm sure the breakup proof comes in at the lowest price point there, but this is the breakup proof I think they call it a gel pencil. And this is just the dark brown. So I'm going across my upper lash line, no big whoop. Just a little definition. And I like the way it goes on. I very much like this brown eyeliner. It's going over a lot of eyeshadow and a lot of shimmer, but it's still not pulling too much. We don't like to pull and tug at the eyelid. Mascara, we've got the Big Papa. Again, this is not a new product to me. I like this mascara. I've gotten along well with it. I've emptied out one already and I did repurchase. Nice for thickening, nice for building some length. I think it's definitely head and shoulders above the different mega whatever mascaras that they have that are like, you know, really, really cheap. Brush is kind of like an hourglass, but it's more tapered at the tip than like a Lash Paradise, and just a little less big overall. Look at that pretty lash I'm building up here. I tell you what, Ozark Man, there was a scene involving a baby that I could not handle. So you look at that really nice black contrasting nicely with the shimmery lid. And then I'm excited for you guys to see the lip product because I feel like that would come under the category of lesser used. Um, it wasn't something I had to newly purchase, but it's something I've had that just needed to be rediscovered for sure. I can't tell if it's thunder or if an airplane took off. 
See, I feel like that orange is not something I would want to really encircle my eye with, especially with the puffiness today. You keep that on top. Okay, so I just added a bit of Cali Ray Come Hill or High Water Mascara to the lower lash line. And then this was the thing that was kind of forgotten, this liquid catsuit from the Mega Last line. It says High Shine Lipstick in the shade Cedar Later. For those of you like brownish kind of bronzy lovers, it's not a shimmer, but it's like a really pretty opaque gloss. I was playing around with this in the last couple days and I thought, wow, what a shade. It doesn't do anything like real tricky in terms of like it's gonna set somewhat or anything. It's just a very opaque lip gloss and I like that shade and I feel like going all over my lips like I wouldn't need any liner. I wouldn't need anything additional. Anybody using these with regularity, I think they're a good product. And the feel is comfortable. It's not too thick, it's not too goopy. So here we are with our finished look. Um, I'm honestly shocked that as I touch my skin, it does not feel that tacky. I mean, like I've got stick after stick after stick. You saw it all going on. And I did set my under eye and T-zone, but all in all, I'm feeling really good about the way the complexion came together. I thought the stick foundation did quite well for medium coverage. Um, and I really thought the concealer covered pretty well too. The bronzer stick applied nicely, gave a nice color intensity, uh, was really a pretty good tone for me. The blush, I think you can just pretty much apply quite a bit of this, I think, to the cheeks and then begin shearing it out like I don't think it has to be like a little goes a long way type deal. I think I probably could have just applied a little more generously at the start and I did really like the uh, look of the cream highlight stick. It wasn't too frosty. It was a nice little soft glaze. An additional product here, this Hello Halo blush lighter. Very, very beautiful. That's giving us, I feel like, most of our blush color. Ooh, I like the primer too. I think I'm going to get some use out of that for sure. That was nicely hydrating, gave a really pretty look to the skin. In terms of lesser used products like the uh, that particular eyeshadow five pan palette. Pretty, and I don't really have any complaints about the quality of the shadows, but you know, it's kind of a specific light look and I don't feel like I would get a lot of variety in the different looks I would create with that one. The slight bit of depth that there is, I would want that, you know, in my crease and outer corner and then I'll have some kind of goldeny shade on the lid and that's pretty much it. Um, it's not a lot of versatility with that one. So definitely not my favorite five pan. But really into this, I know I have some other shades of this as well. The Liquid Cat Suit um, High Shine Lipstick. I believe there's a matte version too that would set, but I'm liking that shine and I'm just really impressed with how full color and even that was. And not not streaky in the least, but yet it is somewhat thin feeling too. Really nice formula. So thank you guys so very much for watching this video. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts if you are familiar with some of these different wet and wild things that I felt like I was really not paying attention to. I just thought that was so interesting. Here I am thinking I know all there is to know about the brand, but I didn't. So thank you guys for tuning in today and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye. And so here is my staying power check-in after six hours of wear and I just spent the last 45 minutes at the playground hot and sweaty. It was so humid out there. Um, I feel like the skin is looking glowy. It's not feeling particularly sticky right now, although T-zone is where it's getting it. A little oily right there. I do not feel that everything has just gone and broken down. We got a little of that glow going on. Kind of what I would expect. Following up on the makeup, this is 12 hours of wear. What I can definitely see right off the bat is a little smudging underneath the eye. Um, I think probably just the amount of moisture that was there. I was didn't set it very heavily and just being out and sweating and all that, that doesn't really shock me. Um, I'm surprised I don't feel greasier to the touch. Um, maybe it's my normal to dry skin type, but it didn't feel majorly affected by the textures of these products. I can see a little breakdown around my nose, but overall the face bye. still looks pretty even. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. Apparently we're about bye. done here, but um, yeah, overall I would say the staying power was better than I thought it would be. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was informative if you also hadn't known too much about these products, and I will see you guys again very soon. I love you. Bye.